The Israelis took immediate revenge for the attack on the Jewish family. They set fire to crops belonging to Arabs, destroyed cars, and broke into the home of an Arab mayor. In the morning, the reprisal continued. Bulldozers were brought in to uproot Arab orchards. The violence took place about 20 miles from Tel Aviv in territory captured by Israel from Jordan in the 1967 war. A spokesman for the dead woman's family said she was driving along the road when Arabs threw a firebomb into her car. She was killed and five other people in the car were badly burned. They included her husband and their three children. The family were settlers in the district. To stop the revenge getting out of hand, the Israelis imposed a military curfew on Arab villages, closing down shops and starting a search for the assailants, so far unidentified.
Hundreds of Druze protesters gathered in the town center to show their anger at what they considered the desecration of a revered monument. The statue of Sultan Pasha al Atrash, a Druze hero who led a rebellion against the French, was apparently damaged in an explosion. But according to local residents, Israeli troops were responsible. A uh, big uh, military car entered the, the square of the village and they put a mine into the statue, which we have celebrated last week, and they exploded it. Israeli police said they had no indication of who was responsible for the damage, but as they arrived to try and restore order, residents began throwing stones, injuring three police officers. The town of Majd al-Sham is situated on the Golan Heights, a strategic plateau captured by Israel from Syria in 1967. About 16,000 Druze live in the area. They have rejected Israeli citizenship and consider themselves Syrian. The responsibility for carrying this atrocity, the kind that was carried out yesterday night, is the total responsibility and the only, respon the only body which is responsible are the Palestinian terror organizations that really carry them out. Students began erecting makeshift barricades on roads leading to the university. Others gathered to coordinate the protest and to ready themselves for an assault by the Israeli security forces. The soldiers nearby moved in from all sides. The army later claimed that live ammunition was only used as a last resort after rubber bullets and tear gas failed to disperse the demonstrators. More shots. One 24-year-old protester killed instantly and at least three others wounded. After a two-hour delay, a fleet of ambulances finally were allowed to take the injured to a nearby hospital where they underwent emergency surgery. Two of the students were each shot in the leg. A third, the most seriously hurt following the 40-minute clash, was shot in the lower back. His condition was not immediately known. Heavily armed patrols sealed off the area as they surveyed the damage and rounded up suspects. At least a hundred people were arrested and questioned about their activities.